Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining us today. Today's video, I'll be using FL Studio Beta for Mac. Um, and before I get started, I just wanna point out that there is a new version of that. I believe we're on beta number five, if I'm not mistaken. You can get it from the image line forum if you're a Mac user. If you're a Windows user, you probably still just have FL Studio 12.5. But what's interesting about this particular release that I wanna point out is that it came out on the sixth a couple of days ago, but it expires on the 22nd, which means is that their betas are getting shorter, shorter, and shorter, which is good news because it sounds like they're ready for a final version. So I'm very excited about that as I'm sure most of you are who might watch this kind of video. But today's video is a little bit different. It's more utility based. So I'll be talking about Scalar and MIDI files because I noticed a, a great trend in producers since these new tools have come out with Scalar, Captain, Instacords and things. People are starting to explore MIDI files and using them to create something original and new. So I wanna point out to you guys, depending on what tool set you have, the internet has always had MIDI files. And I assume a lot of early beat makers online have used them to make a lot of their beats. <laughs> and it's usually not funny, but it's really hilarious when I think back on it from like favorite video games, TV show themes, things like that. Um, the coolest resource these days that I found to find them are like uh, search queries that are tied in with Reddit because Reddit community is kind of like like uh, the old school underground I IRC theme kind of thing. A lot of people still have that mentality, so they're very forthcoming with information and free stuff. So you, what you do is type in Reddit plus MIDI files, find something like this. This particular person, he's creating MIDI files and he says, check out my website. I got mad trance, I got mad, looks like pop and EDM. You go there and then you click on it and download it. For instance, he has Despacito. So you download these, it'll be MID files. Your computer will try to automatically open it and throw it into whatever program. In my case, Reason will open up and load up a GM instrument to play it. GM or General MIDI is just like the default standard from back in the day. So you have to drag and drop it onto the actual instrument you want to use, whether that's Omnisphere, etc. right? So I'm going to show you an example of how to do that, plus how to add it to something like Scalar, which is probably more beneficial to a lot of you. So let's do that first. I'm going to right click, let's insert Scalar. As you know, Scalar is a chord library assistant kind of thing, and it does a whole lot. It allows you to play chords that you see on screen. It allows you to search through things by scale. And the newest update to Scalar has way more scales and has way more songs. Everything from J and K pop all the way up to Neo Soul, which I'm sure a lot of you be interested in. And of course you get to audition these chord progressions. And then find something you like, fill it up in these pad banks here. You can play it in real time with bind or drag and drop it, assign it to another instrument. So what I wanna do instead of that, let's get it out of there. Let's keep it in detect mode. I want it to record MIDI from one of these MIDI files and I want to store it. So I'm gonna close this out real quick. I'll go through this. I was in the bees earlier. I was looking for boys to men to be honest with you because I ended up downloading a quarter million MIDI files. So do you have boys to men, mama and boys to men end of the road. I'm gonna try end of the road. Drag it into scalar. And this is very important. Almost every program does it. Ableton has done it from what I've seen and FL does it. FL has always done this. It's gonna ask you, what do you wanna import? Most websites are good about creating MIDI files that are titled. So when you go to all tracks, instead of getting all the tracks, you could do just piano. And that's what I would want. Accept it, check it out. It's offset, so I'm gonna hold it bring it back. It's playing through Scalar, so it's gonna be a piano sound. So from the looks of it, this particular composition chord-wise doesn't change at all. So I can loop up that range just right here, which is about four bars or two bars, depending on the time signature. So in Scalar, all you gotta do is make sure detect mode is selected, hit start, and then play your session. And I let it loop around. So it began on e, B flat or E flat major and ended on E flat major. So now what I do is hit stop. I analyze this MIDI file. Now to use it in future tense for my own compositions, I can just take the chords out of it. Some of these detections are not chords, they're just passing notes. So that's one full range. And then the new update for Scalar, we get a second range. I like that by itself. I might save that and just make a beat out of that or turn around with just that. 
Now I can save that chord set and of road chords, right? And if you want, you could put EB major there in your title. This way, if you're looking for something or you're creating and you look at your list, you know what key you wanna work in or you already have something in that key from Serato or whatever, you could try these chords out. So boom, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go back to detect mode, clear everything, go back into our user menu, pull this back up. So imagine you analyze a bunch of these MIDI files and you have a decent list. Like I have tons and tons of stuff. So this is the habit that you get into of analyzing and keeping it somewhere where you can experiment. And the reason why I put them into Scalar instead of just using them with Piano Roll is because in Scalar, I can go here and find the rest of the chords too and add on to it. It tells me all the chords in this particular scale so I can switch it up and change it up. I can also change it to a different key on the fly. So since that's the one chord, that tells us what key we're in. So D flat is a D flat major scale, C major scale. So that's the first half. And then this is the second half right when this starts happening. So I have two parts of my new beat already. People like me though, I kind of go a little bit further, a little bit OD, and I will drag this into something else. So in my case, I'm gonna drag it into easy keys, which is fun because it adds a little bit uh, to the particular thing. Perfect. <laughs> so now I can mute all of these and we can load up something different. Let's say like Sample Tank 3 or maybe even Centronic because I like R&B chords on pads a whole lot. And since this is both a verse and a bridge section, I want to drag them into their own patterns. So this one's the verse, so to speak. And this one's a bridge, so to speak. Let's do verse by itself. This way it'd be easier to manage and I don't have to get rid of my original data that influenced all of this. Because sometimes you may want to go back in case you messed up on a step, which I do all the time. So the verse twice, let's set our snap to bar. Sounds like a video game. Let me see if I pick a better sound for that. But basically, you create your whole chord library just like that. Every once in a while, go into your MIDI files, see if you recognize anything. Best case scenario, you don't recognize any of the MIDI files if you download them in bulk and you're using your ears to say, I like that. And then you can analyze it and make sense of what it is. The scaler will show you what the chords are and then you can add it to your library and be good to go. It's just revolutionized my workflow, especially if you have beat block or you're prone to a certain kind of thing where you're more inspired at random and you don't have like all these crazy chord progressions in your head yet. This will help you get there because the more you see it in scale, you start to see where a lot of progressions might start on a one a lot or might end on a five or a four a lot. And that pattern and that self-teaching will help you say, well, I could just play that myself now and experiment in different keys. <laughs> Very cool. And of course you'll do transitions and things, but that's just the experimental part of it. I like it a whole lot. Um, hopefully that helps you guys. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely let us know in the comment box below. If you want to reach us out on social media, I'm at MG the Future on Instagram and Twitter. Also be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace. Thank you.